Hi, I'm Robert Joseph, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this tanga brief. So this is pattern number 69, and you're going to need about a half yard of fabric, um, and then you'll also need two different types of elastic here on the front pouch and on the back here you're going to need 3 8 wide elastic and then here for the waistband elastic to connect the back and the front i'm using one inch wide elastic now you can uh, change the width of the elastic on the waistband if you would like but understand if you change that width you'll need to change the front and the back pattern pieces and, and the nice thing about this is that there is no actual fabric connecting the front pouch and the back area so you have full range of your leg and the only thing that is holding the back and the front is this one inch wide elastic now once i finish this tutorial for this brief here i'm going to show you another way to create the waistband with a drawstring and i've got one here and so basically what i do is i just fold over the one inch allowance for the elastic creating a tunnel and then you can insert your drawstring so I will get right into the tutorial after my fun intro. Okay, so I'm uh, about ready to start cutting the fabric out, but first let's just uh, talk about the pattern first. Now, just as a reminder, this is for the Tanga thong. The pattern number is 69, and um, it just has two pattern pieces. So this is the front pouch, and this is the back. There is no side piece. Um, we're actually gonna be using elastic, uh, same type of elastic we would use for any waistband, um, but there's no side pieces. The elastic is gonna be exposed, okay? So um, just, uh, just to point out the notches, this front notch here on the pouch piece is just to match the front pieces together. Um, and then on the back, I have two notches here, one up close to the waist and the other um, further down. And in these areas, uh, we want to stretch the elastic a little bit more. So because these actually don't go around in a circle, they'll actually attach here, um, here at the um, inseam at the bottom of the pouch and the bottom of the back. Um, the elastic does not circle all the way around for the opening leg area and rear areas. So they'll actually be separate. So I'm, I've just given you two basic um, elastic amounts on the pattern. So um, the elastic amounts for the front pouch and for the back area um, are on one of the pages of the pattern um, that you printed out. And so for the front pouch, we're gonna just cut one long piece and that piece will go along here on the outer edge of the pouch. We'll divide it in two using the seam down here and stretch it into place all the way up here. So for the back piece, we're gonna cut two separate pieces of elastic and that goes here along the outer edge of the back piece. We'll cut two of those, um, the, the amount for whatever size you're making. And then I will talk about stretching that elastic in this area once we get there. And then of course, you're going to need a waistband elastic uh, and that is also on one of the pages of your printout. And we're gonna be using one inch elastic for the waist, and I'm gonna be using this gray color. I think it goes good with this blue fabric that I'm gonna be using. And then for the pouch elastic and the back elastic, um, you'll be using 3 8 wide, 3 8 inch wide elastic. And today I'm using knitted elastic. Um, However, um, normally for like medium to heavier weight, especially if you're going to be lining the front pouch like I will be lining it, you may wanna be using a braided elastic. It's a little bit stronger and it actually has a better recovery. So it actually um, brings things back in after you've elasticized it. So, but I ran out of that. So um, I had this knit elastic, so that's what I'm gonna be using. Just, just understand that the, the pattern is made for 3 8 inch 
wide elastic around the pouch and the back and the waist area is made out of uh, made for one inch wide elastic now that for this particular tanga style um, underwear you don't necessarily have to use elastic and after I've done the entire tutorial I will come back and I will show you an, another option uh, for the waist area if you don't want to use elastic okay so today I'm just using a regular um, knit a knit jersey knit with uh, a limited amount of spandex in here. Uh, this is a this is 100% cotton plus the added spandex in there, so it is kind of stretchy, but it's a kind of a dry medium weight. Um, and you'll see here it likes to curl over to the face side of the fabric. So that's what I'm going to be using today. Um, and I'm getting ready to cut this out. And as you know, whenever I cut anything out, I speed that up. So I will meet you back at the table when I'm ready to put the front pouch together. Okay, so now that we've got everything cut out, I just wanted to show you if you didn't, didn't see it, um, for the elastics, when I have a lot of um, different elastics that I need to cut and they go on different parts of the body, um, what I do is I will tape them with a little note. And in this case, I just taped it to um, the piece of the pattern. But if you don't wanna do this, just label that you have the two back pieces for the rear um, here and then the front pouch piece and they're kind of similar lengths so um, it's kind of a good idea to keep those separate so I just kind of tape them to a piece of paper so I can set all of the elastics aside for right now and the back piece and we're just going to work on the front pouch now I chose to line this you do not have to line it so it does say on the pattern cut to self cut to lining um, if you choose not to line it, of course, you will have that seam on the inside, um, but just be aware. If you want to line it um, and you don't want so much bulk, you can find a lighter weight fabric than what you're using unless your fabric is pretty lightweight. So this is a medium weight. So, um, you know, um, it's okay to line it. Um, in this case, you know, if you wanted to line both pieces, it could kind of be um, reversible, but you would have some of the uh, elastic seam exposed. But anyway, um, just wanted to mention that. So I'm gonna set the pattern aside. Now I cut these face side out. So what I have to do is for each pair, I kind of have to make sure that each pair are face side together. So I'm just gonna reposition these. And when I say face side, um, I mean, if there's any right side of the fabric, I ten, tend to shy away from saying right side of the fabric because there's also a right and a left side of the garment. So I say face side, or you could also say the printed side if you have a print. Okay, so now these are both face side together, a two pair. And then I'm just going to stack the two pair on top of each other, of course, matching these notches here. And that's just to line up your pouch. 
area and then of course align all the cut edges along here we're going to sew right here along the front pouch this is the center front and then we'll go down to the bottom of the pouch and i'm going to go ahead and put pins in this is actually this fabric has a lot of body i don't really need to pin it um, but just so you can see in case you are working with the lighter weight fabric the way i like to pin make sure all your layers are nice and flat and if you pin um, about an inch away from your cut edge as you're sewing in the overlock you won't necessarily need to remove those pins and it keeps um, the fabric from slipping as you sew so just get this pinned up and now I'm going to take this over to the overlock and we'll overlock from here all the way up to the top of the waist Okay, so now that our front pouch is sewn together, let's go ahead and remove the pins. And we will turn this face side out. Now there are two layers to this. So you will have uh, both sides, you will see the face side of your fabric. And just make sure that everything folds out. Again, I'm using um, fabric that has a lot of body, so it looks kind of stiff um, and it, uh, actually holds together pretty well but um, sometimes it has a mind of its own these cut edges like will like to curl so now um, that you have the pouch done turn face side out right I have both right sides on either side we're gonna start working with the elastics and we're gonna do the elastic on uh, this pouch first now up here at this end there's kind of like an angle um, here we're not going to um, put elastic up here in this angle but it's gonna come off here at the side you'll see there's a slight curve and then it goes up here um, and then that point here after we turn the elastic in we're gonna be turning this over with the uh, elastic for the waist so just be aware of that the elastic will end right up here at this point so now I've cut the elastic so let me grab my front elastic so it's this one here take this off all right and then what I'm going to do this piece of elastic I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to mark this with a pin now of course you could mark it with chalk or an erasable pen as well so I just need to get the center of that elastic and now decide which side is going to be your face side your outside because we're going to apply the elastic to the inside so um, it doesn't matter for this one but if you have a print of course um, it's gonna if you sh if you're seeing two of the face sides just decide which face side you want to be on the outside of what people will be seeing or what you will be seeing so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find that spot and I will match my center pin on the elastic to that seam at the bottom of the pouch and then I'm just gonna repin it and I know it's kinda hard I think I'll pin it going horizontal there okay so it's that's your center and then just match either ends of the elastic up to that point up here um, around see we're gonna be stretching the elastic to sew it on around the outer edge and as you follow it up to this point here this point and then it angles off for the waist you want to match your elastic right up at that edge and what I'm doing is I'm matching the outside pouch edge and I'm matching the point of the elastic to the edge of that angled edge so it does kind of come off of that fabric a little bit and that's just fine and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pin there and then I will do the same thing and I twisted it teaching moment I twisted it so I have to actually unpin this and untwist that and reset the elastic so just make sure that your elastic isn't twisted before you sew so now I can pull this and it's not twisted so I'm going to do the same thing with the other side of course make sure I don't get a twist in it this time 
Again, match the edge of the elastic to the edge of the outer side of the pouch. I'm just having a little trouble. I want to make sure that my angled points here match. And then I will match that edge of the elastic by matching this point of the elastic to the angled edge here at the waist. And I'll pin that there all the way through all the layers. And see, it kind of comes off where in the camera is that, okay, right here. So it looks like that, but this is the side we're gonna be sewing on. And as we sew, we're gonna stretch this elastic to match at least the size of the pouch on that edge. And we'll do that on both sides. I'm gonna start up here. And the elastic for me this time is gonna be on the top. So I'm gonna get this into the overlock right here. And I'm probably gonna sew a couple of stitches without stretching just to get it into the overlock, put the needles down and then reset myself and stretch this elastic to fit the edge of that as I sew. So I'm gonna go over to the overlock and do that now. Okay, so one note right before I just remembered, before I go over and overlock the elastic to the edge. So on the overlock for this seam that I sewed, the center seam, um, my overlock has uh, a setting for the stitch length of two, three, and four. So I sewed this on a three. And so when I do this, when I'm just applying the elastic to edges, I actually, I remove one of the needles. So I do this, my regular seams are always with a double needle um, overlock stitch and I sew with a three. But when I apply elastics, I remove the right needle and I'm only sewing with the left needle. So it's a three thread overlock. And I switch that up to the longest stitch I have, which is a four. So again, I'm just gonna state that again. When I sew my seams um, for the regular seams, and this is actually the only seam we have on this garment um, with an overlock, um, then I sew this with a double needle overlock setting at a length of three. But when I apply the elastics, I use a three thread single needle and my stitch length is at four. So I hope you got that. If not, rewind and listen to it again. So that's what you'll see in the video. Okay, so now we have the pouch done. We have the elastic all attached to the pouch. And um, yes, I did make a little um, error here. Well, not an error, the machine ate a little bit of my elastic, so I'm just calling that out. Um, but it's fine, we're gonna actually turn this over and we're going to zigzag it down. Um, but we're not gonna do that just yet because I want to actually work on the back um, because I want to actually attach the back here um, to the pouch at this spot um, before I turn the pouch over and zigzag it. So can it all be zigzagged together? So we'll set the uh, pouch aside right now. And I've got my back here and I need to grab the elastics, but let me open this up really quick. So this is the face side and we are going to turn this over and this is the wrong side now. And we're gonna actually attach the elastic here along the outer edges. This is where the rear end is going to be. And we have two notches here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pin this on. I've got my two pieces here. Let me grab one of these. There we go. And what I'm gonna do is I don't really need a lot of stretch in this area um, or this top area here. So on either side of the notches, where I actually need the stretch is right here, and this is where it needs to hold on to your rear end. So what I'm gonna do is gonna seem a little odd at first, but um, I'm gonna pin it here to the bottom. That's just gonna hold it in place. And then I'm just going to match it up here 
to the notch here. And I'm not gonna stretch it, but I'm just going to go straight here and I'm gonna pin that there. Now, um, you will probably, since I went straight, you will probably need to just tug and stretch that in just a little bit. And what that does is it gives just a little bit of pull there to hold it in. Now on the rest of this, what I'm gonna do is I will take this elastic and just kind of pull it up here to the top. To the top edge of the waist. And I'm going to pin that there as well. And then I'm gonna smooth it down to that top notch, which is right here. And I'll just kind of pin that in place. So now there's pretty much no stretch here and very little stretch here. But here, between the notches, you'll stretch that elastic to fit into that spot. And what that will give enough um, pull there uh, to where your uh, garment will actually kind of hold on to your body, okay? So now you can either put a pin in the center here while you pull it tight and just kind of pin it there in the middle if you want, um, or you can just kind of stretch as you go. I think I'm gonna uh, repin this here. kind of hard on this narrow elastic to get it to go across so the pin doesn't pull out. Now we don't really need any stretch up here at the top because this is actually going to be where our other waist elastic is gonna go. We're gonna fold it over. So we don't really need um, any stretch up there. And under here, it's really such a short area. We don't want too much pull down here because it's actually the um, inseam area. And so we don't wanna be having it pulled down on, uh, on our on that area so we just want this kind of snug here this elastic here to hold on to the body and i'm just going to do one side and i'm going to um, let you do the other side so let's go over to the overlock and i'm again i'm just using my three threads to get this installed Okay, so now that we've got the elastic attached to the backside, uh, we can have a look at see what that looks like. Um, see how it's elasticized here. Now I also want to mention that it does seem, if it seems like it's too much stretch um, and you want to add some elastic, go ahead and add some elastic to the length. I just give these suggestions. You can change the elastic length um, however you would like. So if you don't want it as elasticized here, then add a little length in that um, area. The other thing too is we kind of need to stretch out the elastic because once we turn this and put a zigzag on it, or even if you're gonna use your cover stitch machine, it's stretching this area out. So we wanna make sure that there's enough um, hold there, enough stretch there, um, kind of holding everything in. So now I'm actually going to turn the elastic over and I'm going to zigzag it. And so I'm gonna just basically, this is the inside, and let's fold it over right here at the edge of the elastic. Let's fold it over, make, it, make sure it's nice and flush here on this edge. And you can pin it if you'd like. Um, I don't generally pin um, before I sew. Um, it's just easier for me to actually fold it over as I go. So fold over this area here, but I'm just gonna pin this so you can see what's gonna be happening. Cause it's hard to pin in this area that's we, that we stretched. So I, what I do is I'll usually just stretch it out and then fold it over carefully. Um, and then I can feel the edge of the elastic here. And then I'll just kind of hold that with my, pinch it in my, between my thumb and my finger, and then just go ahead and put a pin there. Now, um, for those of you who have done this a lot and you've used pins, just be careful, you're gonna stick yourself. I stick myself all the time. That's another reason I didn't really use a lot of pins. But you can just kind of stretch it and fold it. If it uh, helps you keep everything together, that's just fine. And just put one extra pin here. And I think you get the idea. 
So I'm just going to do one side for you, and then uh, you can do the other side on your own, or just watch this step again. All right, so that's been turned. I'm going to do both sides. So I'm going to actually pull out the regular sewing machine um, and set it up for my zigzag stitch. I usually use a four millimeter by four millimeter stitch. Okay, so now we have the elastic on the back piece turned over. And you can kind of see, this is the face side now, you can kind of see how um, it's less scrunchy than it was before when we um, actually uh, had just the elastic applied to the seams, to the edges in, anyway. Um, okay, so now what we need to do, and one thing, um, I did go ahead and overlock this bottom edge here. You don't have to um, because it's going to be covered with the zigzag stitch. But we're actually going to attach this piece now at the bottom of the back to the bottom of the pouch. And we're gonna match those face sides together. So this is the face side and I'm just gonna match this. Um, and you can center it and by centering it, you can just fold it in half like this. If you want to put a pin in that center, it's fine. You can do that here, like this, and then match it to the seam down here, right there. And I'll just put that pin back in here. Okay, and now what I'm gonna do is, before I, I put it in the machine to zigzag this part, I'm actually just going to um, top stitch across here on using the regular sewing machine with a straight stitch. And that's just gonna abase it or just keep it attached because the next step is to actually turn the pouch elastic over. And we're gonna, once that is sewn together, here we go, we're actually gonna be turning all of this over. It's gonna be kind of thick. So if your machine has a hard time going through thicknesses, you may just wanna prepare yourself before. You could even probably do this part as a straight stitch because this area doesn't really need to stretch that much. Um, but I'm going to actually just leave it flat like this and I'm gonna base these two pieces together so they stay together while, while I'm working with the zigzag, okay? Okay, so now these are, are <laughs> these are uh, attached together. I did that basting stitch, and I used I think I was set at a, a four and a half. It uh, was not a very small stitch at all. So those are together. So now we can actually work on turning this elastic over um, on the pouch side. And again, we're going to turn it just like we did um, the backs, except there's a little bit more stretch here that we need to work with. So just very carefully. And you'll notice at this edge, there's still, it's kind of like at an angle here. Is that going to refocus? It's kind of like at an angle right here. Just go ahead and keep that because this part is actually going to be turned over and that's where the elastic is going to be. So that's going to be hidden, okay? So I'm just gonna keep it like this and we can put pins in this if we want. I personally just like to turn it as I go. But this bottom part is gonna be a little tricky because we wanna make sure that this is actually out of the way, the back piece, and we're gonna fold that over. I'll go ahead and put a pin here. Okay, so that's all folded over. Let me put a, a pin on either side so I can turn that over and show you. Okay, so uh, make sure that the back is out of the way when you're working with the bottom of the pouch. So we turn it over, right? And that's where our zigzag is going to be. Okay, so I can finish pinning up this one side stretching it and then I'm making sure that edge is flush okay so that's it pin and then I will just turn this other part I won't pin that so again your back is away 
and you're going to be zigzagging the elastic down on the front pouch all the way around. And again, I'm going to use that same zigzag width, 4 millimeter by 4 millimeter. Okay, so now we have the zigzagging done on the pouch. And uh, let's look at this underside really quick. This is where all the thickness was. And I was a little worried um, that my machine would skip a stitch. And it did, it skipped a stitch right here. Now I'm not gonna go back and correct that um, for the video, but uh, some machines have a hard time dealing with the thickness. So if you feel like your, um, your machine is skipping stitches, you can come back and go over that with a straight stitch just to hold it um, secure. Um, so just be aware of that. So, and actually after making this, I probably would not have lined this because this fabric is turning out to be pretty thick and heavy, um, even for a single layer. So this is regular like t-shirt fabric, so it has a, has a weight to it. Okay, so let's move on. The next step is actually to do the elastic. So we have the front here, this is the back, and I'm gonna prepare the elastic. And we do that just like we do um, the regular swimwear elastic if you've seen my other, other videos. So I've got this nice gray color elastic that I have kind of uh, left over from another project. And um, I did cut it, I already cut it in the uh, beginning of the video. Um, but to do this, since the seam is actually going to be enclosed and hidden by the back piece here when we turn it over, um, I can actually just lap it over and I'm going to lap it over a half inch. So I'm going to mark the half inch on either side of the elastic. And we're going to use a straight stitch machine to just stitch this down together. So I've got it marked here. I'm going to take my two ends and I'm going to overlap them right on top of that mark where I've marked. <laughs> so I'll pin this together. Now, one thing, just make sure that it's a nice, smooth ring and that you don't have any twists in it. Otherwise, um, that can uh, lead to a headache if you're trying to put it on your waistband. So I'm gonna run over to the sewing machine and get this uh, stitched together. Okay, so the elastic is all ready. And now we do not need to divide this into fourths because on this we actually don't have a side area, right? We just have the front and the back. So we already know where our back is because it's that seam um, that we just sewed. And so I'm gonna fold this in half and I'm just gonna mark the opposite end, which will be our center front. So I'll just mark that here. And then on our garment, we already have the center front because we have a center front seam. But for the back, I don't have a notch for you, so we're gonna find the center back and we're just gonna fold this in half gently without stretching or pulling. And the opposite end of the um, edges here, where the folded edges, that's our center back. All right, so now again, we just wanna make sure that our garment is laying um, up the right way. So this is the wrong side of the garment. And so what I'm going to do is I've got my elastic ring here and I'm going to lay that center back seam of the elastic right on top here, right where that pin is. And I'm going to actually pin that in place. Take another pin and just hold that for the time being. And then I'm going to make sure that the ring is still the ring. There's no twisting. And I'm gonna take this other edge and I'm gonna lay it down on the inside of the pouch on the center front. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just pin that down. Okay, we wanna make sure that the ring doesn't have any twists. Now I can actually just walk the elastic to each of the edges. And I am, again, I'm using a lot of pins. I don't usually do that and I've stuck myself about 100 times now, but I want to make sure that you see where we're going to be 
um, stitching this down. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the back. So I'm just kind of walking the elastic. I'm not stretching the garment. Pinning it to the edges. That's so the elastic just stays in place while we're working with it. All right, so this is pinned now. So this is what it looks like now, starting to kind of look like the actual uh, garment, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlock both of these edges. So from here in the front, I'm just going to overlock the elastic to the edge, and then I'll stop, and then I'll start here at the back, and I'll overlock the back elastic. And what I'm going to do as I sew, I'm just going to stretch just a little bit, not very much at all, because we just need to um, stretch it um, to help it recover because the machine stretches the elastic and the uh, the uh, fabric when it sews. So we just want to give a little tug on it and the elastic will help recover that stretch. Okay. And then we'll come back right back, come back here. And the next step is to fold this over and to use the, the zigzag and stitch it down. So I'm going to overlock these two um, pieces, the front and the back. Okay, so we have the elastic attached to the garment, um, the waist elastic. And what I was showing you here at these um, corners right here is where I started overlocking and where I pulled it out. And you can just usually fold the fabric away when you're done. Um, you'll have to look kind of down inside to where your foot is to see where the edge of this um, the fabric is that you're um, overlocking on. Now, of course, my I realized that my need to adjust the, the tension on my overlock, and I'll do that later. Um, but for right now, this is just a tutorial. The, the operations are still the same, and the process is the same. So now, what all we need to do is fold these elastics over. And again, I'm going to use the edge of the elastic as a guide and fold that over. I like to do it at the center front and the center back first because um, I like to make sure that those seams are matching. And I can just put a pin here. And then here at this edge, I'm going to match these edges here. And once we uh, stretch it um, when we're sewing, it will go in. It will uh, match up, I'm sorry. And then fold this other edge in. Okay, so that's the front. Now let's fold up this back. And I'm just taking this, and even though there's not a center back seam, I'm folding it, and I'm making sure I'm folding it, you know, straight, straight down. And then I can put a pin there at the center. And then again, when I'm folding this, I'm gonna match, I'll match these edges here the best I can. And then we will kind of slightly stretch as we go. Again, that helps the recovery. So now a note, once to get this started, and you maybe I will do that, do this as well for the home machines. So sometimes it doesn't like to start like right here at the very beginning. So sometimes you can start here and if you have a a machine with a good backup stitch you could start here back up first and then it will flatten that and then it will take it and go forward my machine is electronic and it's the the uh, back stitch is kind of funny um, so what I like to do is I like to stitch forward so I'll start here and I'll stitch forward to the edge and then I will put the needle down and then I will pivot and turn this back going this way and then stitch over it. So that alleviates having to do a back stitch. And sometimes when you back stitch, whether it's here with a lot of bulk um, or anywhere else, sometimes you, your thread will get wadded um, underneath. And I just don't like that. So I prefer to forward stitch, um, put the needle down and then 
lift the presser foot and turn the whole thing back around so that I can stitch forward again. So I'll go ahead and do that in my machine. Um, and pretty much after we get this stitched down, um, we, ha we have a garment. So I'm gonna stitch that and I'll be right back here. Okay, so there we have it. This is the Tanga brief, either underwear or swimwear. If you're making this out of swimwear, just of course make sure you're making it out of swimwear fab fabric, polyester or nylon, um, and then you probably want to at least line the front pouch um, with a swimwear lining. So. Um, that's that is the end of this particular tutorial however at the beginning I did mention that I was going to show you um, another version a uh, way to do the waistband I will mention one thing right now the waistband if you don't want the elastic to be sewn to the actual waist area you can actually just stitch the waist down without the elastic um, overlocked to it. You might want to add about a quarter of an inch to the height of it and then stitch it down with your zigzag stitch or cover stitch and then insert the elastic. It will You'll create a tube, um, insert it into the tube all the way around and then uh, uh, stitch it together like I showed you before and then just pull that back in through the tunnel so you hide that stitch line. So it's pretty easy to do. So I have another way to finish this. Um, the first of it, uh, I will uh, show you folding it over the one inch and then stitching it down. And then I'll show you that I use um, an extra piece of this fabric um, for a waist tie instead of actually having a complete finished uh, waistband. You can just tie it on one of the sides. So that's what I will show you right now. So after that, you will actually see the, the pictures of the final garment in a slideshow, okay? So if you're good with that, you can end um, this the tutorial. Um, and congratulations on your new Tango. Um, but if you want to hang around to see those other waistband options, um, then please do so. Okay, so here we are. I told you I would show you another option for the waistband. So here I have an almost completed Tanga. And what we're going to do is I have it all um, overlocked up here at the edge. We're not putting elastic in. So what we're needing to do is we still need to fold over the front pouch an inch and the back an inch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mark that inch line um, with some chalk. I've got a rolling chalk here. Um, of course, you can mark it any way you want to. And I've got a trusty ruler. And we'll just do an inch, mark that inch line. And this, this is dust chalk, so it comes right off. And just, you know, mark a few places. Of course, you could turn it over and pin it. Um, take the time. To, I'm going to actually pin it, but you could uh, just measure and pin as you go. Okay, so there's one. And then I'll do the front here. An inch. 
So the allowance actually is an inch. So if you want something smaller, you could you will have a longer, um, a taller actually garment, or you can just cut off some extra if you don't like the whole inch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold on those lines I just marked, and I'm gonna make sure I'm pretty matching up the edges here. Of course, this will all get turned around in the machine. I just wanna make sure that I've got all of these going in the right direction. And I'm folding here, making sure that my seam lines match up. I'm gonna zigzag this just like I did before with the elastic. And then because there's stretch in here, I'll go ahead and stretch that as I sew. Now, one of the things is if you're not going to use the elastic, if you're going to use this method, is that, you know, the elastic kind of holds everything together and it also keeps the back kind of evenly spread across your, your back. Um, so this way, the fabric itself, I should say, has a little bit more freedom to do what it wants to do. Um, so it uh, depends on what you prefer. Now I'm going to be doing this with some extra knit fabric from the previous tanga that I made. So you, but you could do it with any fabric. It doesn't actually have to be stretch fabric. You could probably also use a draw, a drawstring, a draw cord, um, or maybe some ribbon um, if that's what you like, right? Because it's just basically. Uh, it's basically just to hold it onto your waist, okay? So I've got everything pinned here. I'm gonna go over and I'm going to actually zigzag this down. Let me actually just make sure that's pinned a little bit more accurately. So regular sewing machine, I'm using the same zigzag stitch. It was four millimeter long by four millimeter wide. Okay, so the uh, top and bottom of the back and front are actually folded over and they're zigzagged down and it kind of creates a tunnel in here. So uh, what we're going to do, let's set this aside now. And I pulled in that uh, extra fabric that I had left over from um, cutting out, so I'll cut on this side. But um, I have this edge, the opposite edge, which I still have some fabric on, and it is kind of curling up so what I'm gonna do is I have it folded in half. To make things easier, I'm just gonna fold it again. It was folded over, and I'm actually just gonna cut that curly edge off. Just make sure what we want is I wanna cut a strip of this at an, about an inch and a half wide. Now, of course, you can cut it any width you want. I'm gonna make sure these edges are kind of clean that I'm not like wasting too much fabric, although I'm gonna waste some anyway. Um, so there, I'm just gonna cut it straight across, get rid of those curlies there. Okay, there's a nice clean edge. And then I'm just going to do an inch and a half. Now this is knit, this doesn't have a lot of polyester in it um, or nylon. So it, it has some stretch, but it doesn't stretch too much, which is kind of nice because it will hold things in. But now on this, with this, you could actually just use this, get a big safety pin and insert it into the tunnel because this won't really unravel, 
of course it will just kind of curl um, as you as it is worn um, but you could of course use that of course a drawstring like I said or a ribbon or even some paracord um, would be nice to go in here to hold it in but what I'm going to do is I cut this strip and I'm actually going to create a tube so um, right sides together face sides together I shouldn't have said that face sides together fold this and then I'm just going to overlock this edge and we'll have a nice little um, uh, string here, tube string um, for our waist band. Okay, so I'm just going to run over to the overlock and stitch this all down all the way the length. Okay. Okay, so I have my tube sewn. So now I need to turn it and I need this little loop turner. It has a little uh, hook on the end here that focuses there, right? If I can get the focus to go a little bit, well, I think that. I know it's a little fuzzy, but it has a little hook on the end with a little arm that kind of closes the uh, fabric in there. So what you need to do, stick this in one end of that tube you just made and push all the fabric down. And we'll see how quick I get this turned. If it takes me a while, I will speed this section up. Try to make sure that your fabric doesn't kind of come down here um, on this loop. It kind of gets stuck here sometimes I push all this fabric down and this is just basically one uh, width of the fabric that's all I did so there's no real measurement so I my hook has come out where's the best way you can see it so I my hook has come out so what I'm gonna do is hook that under and then what I like to do is kind of feel that arm that's underneath and kind of push that through the fabric a little bit push up that little arm push it through the fabric and then it closes up kind of try not to put too much fabric in it because you're gonna pull and you're gonna try to get this fabric over that now this is a wider tube so it should turn on itself and you'll feel it in here on this side once you feel that fabric has turned and you're actually pulling it um, inside out you can see it's going inside itself so don't lose the tension like keep the tension here and just keep like pulling take a little bit move back up to where the top of it is and just use that finger and then sometimes you can just kind of get this fabric just over where the uh, top of the turner is that hook um, and then uh, you can just get rid of the loop turner but let's see there might be this might be too much you don't want to lose the tension because if you lose the tension you may lose the hook the hook may come out of the fabric so just kind of keep the tension and then just keep pulling the fabric over and see I'm back out here so now I can remove that hook and now I can just hold that with my hand while I'm pulling and right be careful not to pull too much I heard some pops I may have <laughs> popped some seams but that's okay now of course you don't have to make a loop you could also make wider uh, tube if you want to you can really do anything as per what the waistband is okay so there is my strap that I'm going to use right it does look kind of skinny I would probably make it a little bit wider but that's okay I had an inch and a half in my hand in my head so uh, that's what I chose to do so now I've got a big safety pin right so I'm going to pierce one of these ends all right so it's good held on nice and all I need to do is I just need to put the safety pin into the tube and kind of pull it through push it through push and pull and just feel with your finger until it comes out the other side 
and I'm gonna pull a little bit. Now you have to decide which side you want it to tie on, the right side or the, the left side. Well, this is my left side, this is my right side. And then I'm gonna put it in the other, the back. I just did the front and just kind of pull that through, kind of move the fabric over the safety pin and just kind of continue pushing it through. It's easier for me to do it this way. Get that all the way through. And you would do the same thing with any kind of um, ribbon or other fabric. Okay. Then once you've got it all the way through, right? Make, I like to make it kind of even. Here you'll have to pull the, the fabric, the body of the garment pieces through, and then you'll have to put it on your body and let's decide how you want it to be tied. And how shall I tie this just so you can see. The bow will be upside down because I'm looking at it right side up. And if you want to finish this end, just kind of tuck these inside themselves and put, do a couple hand stitches. Or sometimes you could rip this open just a little bit so it looks more like the end is unfinished. Okay, so there is that other option for your waistband. Okay, so there is the Tanga underwear swimwear brief. Um, one way to do it is with a full elastic waistband and the other is with a drawstring. So go have fun with this. Once you get going making these, they actually don't take a lot of time. And just as a reminder, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and you'll be notified whenever I have a new video. As always, thank you so much for watching and be well.